This extra lecture is to explain the intuition behind the recursive definition of truncation levels we used in lectures. The main subject today is the functions f from Sn, the n-dimensional sphere, to some type A. First of all, what are n-dimensional spheres? The standard n-dimensional sphere is essentially the set of points of the same distance 1 from the origin in the n plus 1 dimensional Euclidean space, with a suitable topology describing how these points are glued together. So the standard S1 is the circle on the plane. The standard S2 is the surface of the standard ball. And the standard S3 is a surface of the four-dimensional ball. I know the fourth dimension is difficult for many people, so let me stop here. Well, um, the projection of S3 onto the three-dimensional space is just two um, superpositioned solid balls. Okay, I'll really stop. Anyways, you might wonder why the standard S0 is the two points. Well, they are the points minus 1 and plus 1 on the real line. Note that we are talking about homotopy theory, so everything is up to continuous deformation. By S1, we are talking about any shape that can be continuously deformed into the standard circle, same for Sn for other dimensions n. Now we know what spheres are. The next important observation is that a mapping from a sphere, or any shape really, is a folding of that shape into the codomain. For example, a function from S1 to a space is a loop in that space, and a function from S2 is a twisted ball. We will go back to um, this picture later. In homotopy theory, one of the most important concepts is truncation levels. A shape has truncation level n if there were no interesting foldings of spheres of dimensions higher than n. The intuition it captures is that there is no interesting homotopy above dimension n. By homotopy, I mean the structures generated by passes, passes between passes, passes between passes between passes, and so on. Spheres are a special kind of homotopies, and it turns out that um, if we, there is anything interesting happening in dimension n, there will be a non-trivial folding of the n-dimensional sphere as well. Therefore, we can just focus on the spheres. Long before homotopy theory has evolved into the current status, the Russian-American mathematician Vladimir Fafovsky figured out a cool way to express this concept within type theory. To understand his ideas, it is helpful to look at the spheres from a different perspective. So here are the spheres again. S0 is still the space with two points, but S1 is now viewed as the two points plus two arcs connecting the two points, and S2 is the two points plus two arcs plus two hemispheres. Each hemisphere is connecting the two arcs. Um, in general, a sphere can be decomposed into a list of components, two for each dimension and the ones in the next dimension are connecting the two in the previous dimension. This perspective can be precisely formulated by iterated suspensions, but I will not discuss those today. Anyways, let's go back to the picture that sends a sphere to some type. If the sphere can be decomposed into a list of components as we did, so can its image. The recursive definition of truncation levels 
is based on this decomposition. Let's look at the level minus one, the level zero, and level one. The condition of being at level minus one means that for any two points, there is an arc identifying them. The condition for level zero is that for any two points and any two arcs, there is a disk filling the hole made of the two arcs. The condition for level one is that for any two points, any two arcs, and any two hemispheres, there is a ball, a solid ball, filling the hollow made of the two hemispheres. Now you can see the pattern. The condition for level minus one collapse any folding of the two points because the arc will connect the points. The two points are the S naught. So this basically says there's no interesting folding of S naught. Moreover, it collapses the folding of all spheres of higher dimensions due to continuity, a phenomenon we explored in homework 2 and earlier lectures. Therefore, there is no interesting homotopy above minus 1, which, by definition, means the type is at level minus 1. For the next level, it's ranging over two points and then two arcs. Remember that um, the two points plus the two arcs make the circle. And thus, the domain is effectively ranging over all the images of the circle. And the condition says that we can fill any image of the circle, making all homotopies of dimension 1 trivial. Moreover, because our filler is chosen continuously, um, it also kills all interesting homotopies of higher dimensions. Um, so nothing is interesting above dimension 0, and the type is thus um, at level 0. For the next level, there are two points, two arcs, and then two hemispheres. They are the decomposition of the image of the two sphere. Again, the condition says that there is no non-trivial folding of the two sphere, or any sphere of a higher dimension, for example, the three sphere or four sphere. We can use the decomposition of the spheres to write down the condition of truncation levels. And they eventually lead to the recursive definition that we had. The only thing we did not explain is that in the base case, we use the contractibility of the type A instead of A itself. Um, being contractible is stronger than being inhabited. And this stronger condition is to match the spatial truncation level minus two. We will see why it makes sense to have contractibility later. For now, we can at least see that the recursive definition is a sufficient condition of the usual definition of the truncation levels in classical theory. The rest of this lecture um, is to see why it is also a necessary condition. Let's first check what it means by having no interesting homotopies in dimension zero. This means that for any two points, there is an arc connecting them. But the choice of the arc might not be continuous. So there's a great box. Um, please read section 7.3 of the hot book if you are curious about how to express this in type theory. Um, for the next dimension, it says any circle can be filled, though the choice again might not be continuous. The same applies to dimension 2 and also dimension 3 and so on. If there is a type that has only trivial homotopies from the lowest dimension, 
starting from the type itself, we may conclude that the type is contractible under reasonable assumptions. There is a classical theorem named after British mathematician Alfred North Whitehead, which states two good spaces are equivalent when their homotopies are uniformly isomorphic across all dimensions. Uh, we say a space is good if it is a CW complex, which means that um, it is constructed inductively from points, lines, faces, and so on. For example, our decomposition of spheres is a proof that they are CW complexes. Anyway, the unit type has trivial homotopies in all dimensions, and thus if a good space has only trivial homotopies, it is equivalent to the unit type, which means that it is contractible. Therefore, we can summarize these triviality conditions as contractibility. By the way, the Whitehead principle uh, in general is not provable in homotopy type theory, but maybe this special case we used can be proved. I'm not entirely sure. Um, all right. What if we only have triviality starting from the next dimension well, we can factor out the prefix and apply the same argument to the identification type from x to y. This means we can always summarize the triviality starting from a certain dimension as contractibility. For example, triviality from dimension 1 is contractibility of the dimension types from p to q. Triviality from dimension 2 is contractibility of the identification type from R to S, and so on. To repeat, when the type has truncation level minus 1, which means its homotopies are all trivial starting from dimension 0, all of its identification types are contractible. A similar argument works for truncation level 0, level 1, level 2, and so on. This leads to our recursively defined formula and explains why we have contractibility in the base case. We also saw why it is a sufficient condition. In sum, the recursive formula given by Vladimir Fofowski precisely captures the idea of truncation levels. See you next week. Bye.